You're listening to an audiobook short story titled The Nightingale, written by the renowned Danish author Hans Christian Andersen. The story has been narrated by Kenneth De Silva. Let's begin. The Emperor of China lived in the finest palace in the world. It is made entirely of fine porcelain, extremely expensive, but so delicate that he could touch it only with the greatest of care. In the garden, the rarest flowers bloomed, and to the prettiest ones were tied little silver bells which tinkled so that no one could pass by without noticing them. It was beautifully designed, though how far and wide it extended, not even the gardener knew. If you walked on and on, you came to a fine forest where the trees were tall and the lakes were deep. The forest ran down to the deep blue sea, so close that tall ships could sail under the branches of the trees. In these trees lived a nightingale. She sang so beautifully that even the poor fisherman would stop mending his nets to listen. How sweet that song is, he would sigh, whenever he heard it. From all the countries in the world, Travellers came to the city of the emperor. They admired the city. They admired the palace and its garden. But when they heard the nightingale, they said, That is best of all. And the travellers told of it when they came home. And men of learning wrote many books about the town, about the palace and about the garden. But they did not forget the nightingale. They praised her highest of all, and those who were poets wrote magnificent poems about the nightingale who lived in the forest by the deep sea. These books went all the world over, and some of them came even to the Emperor of China. He sat in his golden chair and read, nodding his head in delight over such glowing descriptions of his city and palace and garden. But when he came to the words, the nightingale is the most beautiful of all, he looked puzzled. Nightingale? I have never heard of a nightingale in my garden. Can there be such a bird in my empire, in my own garden, and I not know of it? To think that I should have to learn of it out of a book? Thereupon he called his lord in waiting who was so exalted that when anyone of lower rank dared speak to him or ask him a question, he only answered, Pa, which means nothing at all. They say there's a most remarkable bird called the nightingale, said the emperor. They say it's the best thing in all my empire. Why haven't I been told about it? I've never heard the name mentioned, said the lord in waiting. She hasn't been presented in court. I command that she appear before me this evening and sing, said the emperor. The whole world knows my possessions better than I do. The lord in waiting promised the emperor he would find this nightingale. But where? The lord in waiting ran upstairs and downstairs through all the rooms and corridors, but no one he met with had ever heard of the nightingale. So the lord in waiting ran back to the emperor and said it must be a story invented by those who write books. Your imperial majesty would scarcely believe how much of what is written is fiction, if not downright black art. But the book I read was sent to me by the mighty emperor of Japan, said the Chinese emperor. Therefore it can't be a pack of lies. I must hear this nightingale. I insist upon her being here this evening. She has my high imperial favour. And, if she is not forthcoming, I will have the whole court punched in the stomach directly after supper. Very well, said the lord in waiting, and off he scurried up the stairs through all the rooms and corridors again and half the court ran with him, for no one wanted to be punched in the stomach after supper. 
Then, just as he was about to give up, a little kitchen maid came up to him. I know the nightingale, she said. Every evening I go home to take care of my sick mother who lives by the seashore. When I return to the palace, I stop in the forest to rest and listen to the nightingale's song. Oh, it's so lovely. It brings tears to my eyes. Come with me. I will take you to her. All the palace servants followed as the kitchen maid led the way through the garden. There she is, said a young courtier. What a very loud noise for such a small creature. Um, that's a cow, not a nightingale, replied the kitchen maid. We have a long way to go yet. They carried on walking. I can hear her, said a serving girl. Her song sounds like tinkling church bells. Hmm. Those are frogs, laughed the maid. But quiet now. We're getting close. Look, there she is, said the maid. And she pointed to a little grey bird perched on the bough of a tree. What an exquisite sound, said the lord-in-waiting. But, uh, I wasn't expecting such a small, plain, simple creature. Maybe she became pale at seeing so many important people nearby. Never mind. <clears throat> most excellent nightingale, he called out. Our most gracious emperor wishes you to sing to him. With the greatest of pleasure, answered the nightingale, and burst into song. Very similar to the sound of glass bells, said the lord in waiting. I am astounded that we have never heard it before. I am sure it will be a great success at court. Shall I sing to the emperor again? asked the nightingale, for she thought that the emperor was present. My good little nightingale, said the lord in waiting, I have the honour to command your presence at a court function this evening, where you will delight his majesty, the emperor, with your charming song. My song sounds best in the woods, said the nightingale, but she went with them willingly when she heard it was the emperor's wish. The palace was specially decorated for the great occasion. The walls and floors of porcelain glittered in the light of a thousand lamps, and beautiful flowers with little bells stood in the corridors. In the centre of the great hall was a golden perch for the nightingale to sit on. The whole court was present, including the kitchen maid. As the emperor nodded to the little grey bird to begin, all eyes turned to watch. The nightingale sang so sweetly that tears started rolling down the emperor's cheeks. Oh, how glorious, he cried. Please, wear my golden slipper round your neck as a token of my thanks. I have seen tears in the emperor's eyes, answered the nightingale. That is a powerful gift, the greatest of them all. And she sang even more enchantingly than ever. Everyone loved the nightingale singing so much that the emperor decided she was to stay at the palace. The little bird was placed inside a specially made cage, and twice a day she was allowed to walk around the room. Once a day they let the bird fly in the garden. Twelve courtiers were assigned to her. Each held a ribbon that was tightly tied to the bird's leg. It wasn't a pleasant experience for anyone, and it looked very ridiculous to anyone watching. The whole town talked about the marvellous bird, and if two people met, one could scarcely say night before the other said gale, and then they would sigh in unison with no need for words. Ah. One day, the emperor received a large package labelled the nightingale. This must be another book about my celebrated bird, he said. But it was not a book. In the box was a work of art, an artificial nightingale, almost like the real one. 
except that it was encrusted with diamonds, rubies, and sapphires. When it was wound, the artificial bird could sing one of the nightingale's songs while it wagged its glittering gold and silver tail. Around its neck hung a ribbon inscribed, The Emperor of Japan's Nightingale is a poor thing compared to that of the Emperor of China. Ah, such an enchanting sound, sighed the Emperor. Bring me the real nightingale, so they can sing together. What a duet that will be. But the two birds didn't sound as good together as the Emperor had hoped. The clockwork nightingale's song was mechanical and rather harsh compared to the natural beauty of the real bird's song. The clockwork bird had just one rather complicated tune that it sang over and over, 33 times to be exact, before it needed winding up again. But the emperor's music master was full of praise. It sounds perfect to me, your imperial majesty, he announced. And with all its little cogs and wheels, it's perfect on the inside too. In fact, it's so perfect, it should sing all by itself. You never know what a real nightingale is going to sing. But with this bird, there will be no unexpected surprises. You get the same tune every time. Maybe you are right, said the emperor. Besides, it's so much prettier and more sparkly to look at than that small grey bird. Oh, where's it gone? No one had noticed her flying out the open window back to her home in the green forest. But what made her do that? said the emperor. All the courtiers slandered the nightingale, whom they called a most ungrateful wretch. That nightingale is banished from my empire, never to return again, announced the emperor grandly. No matter, for we have the best bird of all right here. Let's listen to it again. The next day, the music master paraded the clockwork nightingale before a great crowd that had been summoned to hear it sing. Everyone was very impressed. All, that is, except the poor fisherman. It sounded pretty enough, he thought, and the tune is quite similar, but something's not quite right. The clockwork bird was placed on a silk cushion by the emperor's bed and surrounded by gifts of gold and precious stones, and its title was now Grand Imperial Singer of the Emperor to Sleep. The music master wrote a 25-volume book about the artificial bird. It was learned, long-winded, and full of hard Chinese words, yet everybody said they read and understood it lest they show themselves stupid, and would then have been punched in their stomachs. Before long, they had heard the song so many times, they all knew it by heart. La la la, zing zing, whirr. Even the emperor sang along. But one night, while the artificial bird was singing his best by the emperor's bed, something inside the bird broke with a twang. All the wheels ran down and the music stopped. Out of bed jumped the emperor and sent for his own physician. But what could he do? Then he sent for a watchmaker who conferred and investigated and patched up the bird. But the watchmaker said that the bird must be spared too much exertion for the cogs were badly worn and if he replaced them, it would spoil the tune. It was a terrible upset. Although the music master pretended to everyone that the bird was fine, from now on it was only allowed to sing once a year, and even that was risky. Five years passed, and a great sadness slowly fell over China. The people were very fond of their emperor, but by now he was very ill so ill that a new emperor had been chosen to be crowned when he died. People stood in the palace street and asked the lord-in-waiting 
how it went with their emperor. Pa, he said, and shook his head. Cold and pale lay the emperor in his great magnificent bed. All the courtiers thought he was dead and went to do homage to the new emperor. The lackeys went off to trade gossip and the chambermaids gave a coffee party because it was such a special occasion. Deep mats were laid in all the rooms and passageways to muffle each footstep. It was quiet in the palace, dead quiet. But the emperor was not yet dead. Stiff and pale he lay in his magnificent bed with the long velvet curtains and the heavy gold tassels. High in the wall was an open window through which moonlight fell on the emperor and his artificial bird. The poor emperor could hardly breathe. It was as if something was sitting on his chest. Opening his eyes, he saw it was death who sat there. Wearing the emperor's crown, handling the emperor's gold sword, and carrying the emperor's silk banner. Suddenly, the curtains in the bedroom shifted, and faces began to appear in the cloth, some horrible, some kind. These were all the evil and good deeds the emperor had committed. The faces began whispering about all the good and evil the emperor had done in his life, but the emperor refused to listen. He called out, Music! he cried faintly. Sing, my precious little golden bird. I have given you precious gifts. I have even hung my golden slipper around your neck. Sing! Sing! But the bird stayed silent. Because there was no one to wind it up, it couldn't sing a note. Suddenly through the window came a burst of song. It was the little live nightingale who sat outside on a branch. She had heard of the emperor's plight and had come to sing of comfort and hope. As she sang, the shadows grew pale and still more pale and the blood flowed quicker and quicker through the emperor's feeble body. Even death listened and said, Go on, little nightingale, go on. But, said the little nightingale, Will you give back that sword, that banner, that emperor's crown? And death gave back these treasures for a song. The nightingale sang on. It sang of the quiet churchyard where white roses grow, where the elder flowers make the air sweet, and where the grass is always green, wet with the tears of those who are still alive. Death longed for his garden. Out through the windows drifted a cold grey mist as death departed. Thank you, thank you, the emperor said. Little bird from heaven, I know you of old. I banished you once from my land, and yet you have sung away the evil faces from my bed and death from my heart. How can I repay you? You have already rewarded me, said the nightingale. I shall never forget the tears in your eyes the first time I sang to you. That is a powerful gift, the greatest of them all. But sleep now and grow strong and well. I will sing to you again. As she sang, the emperor fell into a sweet sleep. When he woke up, the sun was shining and he felt strong and alert. But not one of his servants was by his side. They still thought he was dead. Please, stay with me always, the emperor pleaded to the nightingale. You can sing only when you want to. Meanwhile, I shall break that clockwork bird into a thousand pieces. No, don't do that, replied the nightingale. It kept going for as long as it could. Keep it here. I can't live in the palace and build my nest, but in the evening... I will sit on the bough by your window and sing to you. I'll make you feel happy, but I'll also make you feel thoughtful. My songs will tell you of all the good and evil that you do not see. I shall tell you about the lives of the people in your empire you never meet, like the poor fisherman and the little kitchen maid. I shall tell you about people who are happy, 
and those who feel sad also. But you must promise me one thing. All that I have is yours, cried the emperor, who stood in his imperial robes which he had put on himself and held his heavy gold sword to his heart. One thing only, the nightingale asked. You must not let anyone know that you have a little bird who tells you everything. Then all will go even better. And away she flew. When the servants finally arrived to carry their dead emperor away, they were astonished to see him standing in his fine velvet gown. The colour had returned to his cheeks, and he looked fit and healthy. Good heavens, they cried in surprise. Good morning, he answered with a happy smile. That has been the short story, The Nightingale. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.